Congressman Mike Quigley, Democrat from Chicago's 5th District, joins me this morning in our WGN studios to talk about that and more. Congressman, thank you for coming in. Glad to be here. So, uh, again, the, the, the failure of the bank surprised a lot of people, but there was that notion that says that in the Trump administration, regulations rolled back, but 13 Democratic senators voted to roll them back. Yeah, absolutely. I think what concerns me the most is, again, we didn't see this coming. That bank was reviewed just months before, and it wasn't given a risky bill of health. How come we never see this? Obviously, we didn't see the, the crisis in 2008 happen. Uh, we didn't see this and so many others. So that's my first concern. Second one is, uh, when will we learn, right? We had this crisis uh, based on risky behavior, and it cost us a great deal of money to to bail out the, the financial market, but it devastated the lives of millions of Americans. So we passed Dodd-Frank, and in 2018, under the Trump administration, we repealed many of those protective measures, including having those mid-sized banks have enough reserves. So again, we put the system at risk. This starts to show what happens when you have too much risk. So will there be regulations coming back expected, or with this divided Congress, probably nothing happens? I see nothing happening under a divided Congress. I think some people are having a hard time accepting the fact that maybe they voted the wrong way. If they're Democrats or Republicans, it was still the wrong way. Yeah, so far, those that voted against it have not said that. They, they're right. just fine shock, with their vote. Shock, surprise, all. Uh, tomorrow, you're off to Lima, Ohio. Uh, that's where uh, I didn't realize that's the only facility where our tanks are made. And you're going there tied to Ukraine. You're wearing a pin uh, for Ukraine today. Uh, Poland has announced they're sending a dozen MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine. Uh, give us an update of what we need to be doing, especially in light of Ron DeSantis, who looks like he's running for president, saying this is a territorial dispute. We shouldn't be involved. Here's what I would say first to the governor of Florida. Uh, was the invasion of Poland by Soviet, the Soviet Union and Germany a territorial dispute? Was the German invasion of France in World War II a territorial dispute? Uh, no, it was a ruthless attack on a sovereign democratic country as was Putin's attack on Ukraine. I would say to the governor, I stood at Bucha on a mass grave. It is happening in our lifetime. So it's not a territorial dispute. You're showing uh, your lack of foreign policy uh, um, merits, and you're also being very insulting. What we need to do, it's, it's shifting to an extent from not just keeping the West unified and our country unified, but our capabilities. I think this war exposed something we don't want to talk about, and that is uh, particularly NATO wasn't prepared for any kind of war. I think for NATO, who weren't spending close to what they needed to, and they weren't keeping their weaponry up, uh, they weren't prepared for a war. Ukrainians are firing about 11,000 artillery shells in a couple days. That's how much we produce in a month. So uh, I'm going to Lima, then I'm going to go to Scranton where the shells are produced and other places where javelins are produced because we have to meet that demand. Do you expect the U.S. will keep with that policy? I think we will, uh, despite well, what we hear from a minority, I think, of Republicans. Well, here's why I ask that, because there are some who believe that Putin will drag things out as much as he can until the 2024 election here, because if we do get a Republican president in the form of a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis, well, then he's got it made. Putin has it made. Uh, it's a major concern, and it's why when Zelensky said to me when I was in uh, Kiev last summer, help us win quickly, it's hard to keep morale and support for a conflict like this uh, strong. Uh, so we need to help them win quickly. Uh, Secretary Austin said virtually the same thing. So when you talk about Poland uh, and now Slovakia giving the MiG jets, it reminds us that we have to give them exactly what they need to win this war and win it quickly. Is President Biden being tested? What, by that I mean we've got this week, as you know, the situation of the Russian fighter who, who you know, came into contact with an American drone, the Chinese spy balloons of, of a week or two ago. Are we being tested by our main foes and how are we doing in the test? I, I think we are constantly being tested. Uh, I think the Ukraine war is the most important test because clearly Beijing was, was watching to see how... Uh, this might go if they took on Taiwan. Uh, well, we're being tested on an ongoing basis. In that vein, I think we've done very well. No one, I mean no one, expected the Ukrainians to hold on like this. They don't do it without our help and without Biden's supreme work keeping NATO unified. But on all these things, we have to show resilience and resolve, but we also have to be mindful. Uh, the bravado can't be everything. That's how wars start.
Um, the, the president's been taking executive order steps with regard to the gun control issue, and it looks like you know, this Supreme Court, conservative as it is, is not very open to the steps that the president is taking. Once again, is that an area that Congress will do anything about? It's hard to imagine in a, a government this divided, this polarized, that we can accomplish these things. Uh, you talk about any matters, immigration reform. That used to be a bipartisan deal. We came so close in the last decade to passing significant immigration reform. Now, all of a sudden, I don't see it happening in the next decade if that polarization doesn't stop. You met this week with Oscar Robles and his, uh, Robles and his family. I think it was to put a highlight and, and, and focus on the DACA programs. What do we expect to happen there? Well, again, I'm pessimistic. Uh, the reason I met with him is because we're trying to help his situation. He is the poster person and his family are for comprehensive immigration reform. He came here as a teenager almost three decades ago, has been a great citizen, raised a family, worked hard. Uh, there are 12 million people in a situation like him. Uh, it is the smart thing to do and it's the right thing to do to protect and secure our borders, but also to do what Reagan, what Bush, and what others have said is, is to find a pathway to citizenship. Less than 30 seconds, but I just want to ask you, all the litigation potentially uh, flying around uh, former President Trump, if in fact he's indicted over the Stormy Daniels situation, you are a former practicing lawyer, is that the right thing to happen here of all the things that are possible, or would that be a mistake on the part of any of the governmental entities? No, look, it, it, you're absolutely right. It's not ideal, right? I, I think this president committed multiple multitude of crimes and misdigators. I mean, uh, you know, basically holding Ukraine hostage was one of those great sins. So this seems so bizarre and trivial, but you can't tell, as you know, local prosecutors what their priorities have to be. And if he's committed a crime, uh, he has to be held accountable. We'll see how it plays out. See, put your lawyer head on once in a while. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman Mike Quigley of Illinois' 5th District.